Hey, how's it going guys? In this video, I want to cover how to get started with building desktop application using PyQt5 in Python. So let me give you a, a little story about myself when I learned how to use PyQt5 framework to build different types of applications. So my background session in accounting and finance, and I also enjoyed building different types of desktop applications for finance, accounting, even just for my own automation or personal projects. And after going to different frameworks uh, for Python and other systems, so I've tried Ticket Inter, uh, KV, and uh, Py Simple GUI, I think that was the name. Then move on to PyQt5. After using PyQt5 for a while, I in love with using this framework to build different types of applications. Here, let me show you some of the applications that I built so you know what we can do with this framework. All right, so this is one of the app that I built to put different YouTube channel videos. A lot of time I will look for different topics to find any ideas on what topic or what videos to make. And by using this tool and inserting the channel ID, I can grab a channel's entire upload video information, such as video ID, video title, duration, the day when the video is published to YouTube, the view count for that video, the number of likes, dislikes, comments, and here I have a, a progress bar that gives me the popularity rating for that particular video, as well as a glance of the thumbnail. And the other application I use pretty frequently when I'm watching YouTube videos is this uh, common extractor. We all know that when you watch a very popular YouTube video, they need to keep loading the additional comments until I reach to the uh, last comment. And also, when you read the comments, you can only sort the comment by the latest post comment or the most relevant comment. I don't know how you to determine which comment is the most relevant comment, but I'm guessing it's using the like and dislike ratio. When you navigate to the comment section, you always want to go from the earliest comment to the newest comment. And to solve that issue, so I create this application to allow me to uh, put the entire comment from a video. And a couple other uh, simple tools that I built. One of them is the exchange rate calculator. I'm seeing this calculator. So this application will give me the exchange rate from USD to this file in currencies. And right now I'm uh, resetting in Taiwan and I need to know what's the USD to uh, TWD uh, exchange rate every day. And that's just some of the examples that you can build or application you can build using PyQt5. Now let's go to a PowerPoint that I created to cover some of the things we'll be covering. Here, let me zoom in. And to be honest, I don't know how to use PowerPoint. Here, I'm just going to use this view right here. All right, so the first thing you need to know is what is PyQt framework? So PyQt is a library created by Riverbank, the company, based on the Qt framework to let you build different desktop applications in Python. There's another framework called PySite2, which is created by Qt, the company itself. But with PyQt framework, uh, since this framework has an actual company behind to maintain. So whenever there's an issue, Riverbank will fix the issue uh, much quicker than uh, Qt, the company itself. And some of the large companies like Adobe, Mercedes, TechSmith, Autodesk, they all use Qt framework or PyQt library to build their in-house or commercial products. So that's some of the history of PyQt. Now I want to cover the pros and cons. So when you use PyQt5 to build desktop applications, the advantage over other frameworks such as TKinter, TV, is that this is actually a UI design editor for PyQt5. Here, let me show you what the design looks like. And this is something I wish Ticket Intel would have for beginners who is trying to get into building desktop applications. And here's the Qt design itself. On the left hand side, we have a panel uh, display a list of widgets that you can uh, drag and drop to the window itself. On the right hand side, we have multiple different panels. Each panel does different functions. I'll cover how to use Qt Designer on the next video. But just so you know, there's a designer that you can use to quickly build out different interface for your desktop application. 
The second advantage using PyClify is that the framework has much larger libraries. Here, let me put on my uh, Qt module navigation utility. And this is another tool I built using PyQt5 framework. From this dropdown, we have a list of modules that are tied to different functions. For example, Qt widgets module contains all the classes that serve as kind of like a, a widget or control. We have a label, combo box, this box, oops, list. Oh, it should, should be list widget and list view and many other uh, classes or widgets. I think there are more than 500 classes available when it comes to PyQt5. And comparing to other desktop framework, uh, you can do way more things with PyQt5. And when it comes to designing a UI, you can also write your own CSS style sheet to design your application interface. The third advantage using PyQt5 is the number of resources are available out there. Because when you use PyQt5, you're actually using the Qt framework. And the Qt framework is available on many different platforms, like I said, Java, C++. So there are way more resources, in my opinion, than Ticket Enter. The downside is, Many of the available resources will be written in uh, C++ or Java. You just need to learn how to translate those syntax into Python syntax. And number four is the framework is ridiculously fun to build different applications. Once you get used to it, you can literally build any types of uh, applications that you want. And there's no limitation on what you can do or what you cannot do. Now let's cover the disadvantages. All right, so if you want to use PyQt5 to build commercial applications, then you need to buy a license. And the license is quite expensive. It's $550, I think covers one year update. The second disadvantage is PyQt5 use GPL license. I won't cover too much into detail on different types of license. With GPL license, I believe that when you distribute your application as open source, when someone requests that you provide the source code with a product that you built, you are obligated to provide the source code. If the information is incorrect, uh, someone please correct me. And the third disadvantage, I think is the most important one, is that when you are learning how to use PyQt5 framework, the learning curve is much steeper because there are way more things you need to manage when you build a PyQt application. It took me about six months. I spent maybe about one to two hours every day just to learn how to get used to of the syntax and building different types of uh, small applications to get more experience. And I think when I reached to that one year mark, I was finally comfortable uh, using PyQt5 to build commercial applications. Now let's go to the next slide. So I already covered the demo on um, some of the desktop applications I built using PyQt5. Now we're going to write our first PyQt application in Python. Now let me put on my uh, spline text. So for desktop application development or uh, visualization, I like to use Sublime text. And for anything else, such as uh, data analysis using Pandas, NumPy, or uh, creating automation script, I like to use VS Code. Let me start by inserting my code template. And I'll just cover the very basic in this video. So let me remove the uh, extra classes. Now let's take a look at this uh, Python script. We're going to start from this uh, main routine. So when you're creating a PyQt application, every single application must has an instance of Q application. And the Q application class, so this class right here, takes an instance of an array object. And the reason why we are inserting the system argument uh, command is here, let me print the argument value. And let me launch the application first. Oh, I forgot to activate my environment. Now let's take a look at the error message. If we look at the error message, 
not enough arguments. And this Q application class takes a list of uh, parameters. And this is a parameter basically are your variables that you want to pass to. And on the top we have the argument value, you know, list object. So in simple English, we are basically using Q application class to code this uh, Python script. In this case will be demo.py. And the app instance is going to keep the application running in the background. And as I mentioned before, we can supply our own CSS style sheet. This is a more advanced topic, which I'll cover in some other video. And my app is my window, my application window. Now let's go to my app class. So do some advice when you want to build desktop application using PyQtify. You need to understand how Python inheritance work because in PyQtify framework, it's all about class inheritance. And if we look at this my app class, we are passing the Q widget class as the parent class. And from line number seven, super dot init. This line allows us to inherit the attributes and method from Q widget class. And Q feedback layout class is one of the layouts which in PyQtify, there are many different layouts that I can use. And since Q widget class is our parent class in the my app class. Here I can use the method of the Q widget class. So if you want to set the window size, we can use a method called resize method to set the window size. And here we haven't uh, inserting any widget to our window. I'm going to create a label. And for label, we'll be using Q label class. So this is another widget I can use. I'm going to name my uh, label label with lowercase l is equals to q label inside the q label class we can insert the text we want to display so let's display hello world oops let's exam line 12 and line 13 so here I'm creating an instance of Q feedback layout. And to let this my app class to be able to use the layout, we need to use this method self.setLayout method and we'll supply the layout object. Now I want to add all the widgets to this uh, Q vertical box instance. So from the layout object, there's a method called add widget. There's also another method called add layout. We can actually add another layout on top of the vertical bus layout. And there'll be another topic for some other video. So inside the add widget method, we want to insert our widget. And our widget is going to be a label. Now go back to the uh, this main routine. Here we'll create an instance of Q application. We set the style sheet to increase the font size of all the child items on the Q widget. So here Q widget is basically our parent. So when you insert CSS style property, this property is going to apply to all the child widgets. And here we need to create an instance of my app class. I want to show the window by using the method show. And finally, when we close the window, we can use system.x method to terminate the PyQt application process. In phase similar to Q application class, we don't necessarily need to provide system.argument uh, property. We can simply just provide an empty list. So let's do that right now. And app.execute allows the application to launch. Now if I run the script, and here I have a, a label. Let me try again. So here's my window. And here's my label. Now if I change the font size to 105, and if I launch my application again, my font size is going to increase to 105 pixel, even though uh, in my CSS style sheet, I didn't specify that I want to increase the font size to the Q label class. So this is everything I want to cover in this video. And I hope you guys found this video useful. 
If you have any feedback or any comment, please leave it in the comment section below. For now, this is everything. I'll see you guys on the next video.